She sat in her office, carefully studying the papers her husband had recently brought her. She and Archie had worked together at the same company, Archie as the deputy director and Sarah as the accountant. Initially, Sarah had wanted to work as her husband's secretary, but he had strongly objected. He believed that constant communication at work would leave them with nothing to talk about at home. Sarah, educated as an accountant, easily secured a position as his assistant. Eventually, she became the chief accountant at the same firm. They saw each other at work but rarely, as Sarah seldom left her office. There was always plenty of work to be done, and they hadn't ended up at this firm by chance. Once, when Archie was job hunting, he happened to meet an old classmate who was already trying his hand at business. Archie agreed to help his classmate and within six months became his deputy. Now, it was a large construction materials firm. The pay was good, so they saw no reason to change jobs. Plus, it was close to home. Archie and Sarah had been married for ten years. Career came first for their family, so talk of children was premature. Although Sarah worried she might not have children in time, biological clocks ticking. Last year, she turned 33. Sarah would never forget the day she first saw Archie. He was the most handsome guy at university, not just to her, but to her classmates too. Archie took a long time to choose a girlfriend, but eventually settled on Sarah. She was the most beautiful and kind-hearted. Their relationship quickly progressed, and within two years they were married. Today, Sarah remained happy in her marriage, believing that the time would come when she and her husband would have a child. But every time they discussed it, she knew Archie wasn't ready yet. A knock interrupted Sarah's thoughts. Come in, she called out. The owner of the construction empire entered her office. Anthony, hello, Sarah greeted him with a smile. Hello, Sarah. Where's your husband? I haven't been able to find him all morning. I honestly don't know. We came to work together, but then he disappeared somewhere, Sarah replied. Strange. Neither he nor his secretary is around, Anthony remarked. But honestly, I don't know where they are. All right, I'll go ask John. Maybe he's seen him. John swiftly turned and left the office. Sarah paused, troubled by the mention of her husband's absence and his secretary's whereabouts. She had suspected before that the secretary, Brittany, lingered around her husband for more than just work reasons. Now, it seemed her suspicions were confirmed. Brittany was young, only 25 years old, and as they say, had legs that went on forever. Sarah sat a bit longer but found it impossible to concentrate on work now. She rose from her desk and headed towards Archie's office. Indeed, the secretary wasn't at her post and the office was locked. With trembling hands, Sarah took out her phone and dialed her husband's number. It was odd, but the phone rang in the office and, of course, no one answered it. Sarah returned to her office, feeling distressed. She didn't understand what to think now, where her husband had gone, where Brittany had disappeared to. Fifteen minutes later, Archie finally called back. He said he had gone to a construction site and Brittany had gone for a manicure. Since he wasn't at the office, he suggested she focus on her own tasks. This time, Sarah chose to believe him again, although she knew deep down that he was probably lying. She didn't want her suspicions to be true, didn't want to shatter her constructed world. That evening, when they were home and sat down to dinner, Sarah decided to confront him. Archie, tell me the truth. Is there something going on between you and Brittany? Sarah, how long do I have to justify myself to you? There's nothing between me and Brittany. There's no connection. I'm tired of talking about it. I find it hard to believe that there's nothing at all. It feels like you're hiding something from me. Just calm down. 
you were becoming too suspicious. As always, the conversation didn't go anywhere, and they ate their remaining dinner in silence. Sarah was jealous of Archie not only with Brittany, but also with his previous secretary, Miranda. She, too, had been young. Back then, Sarah couldn't find peace either. But as Archie said, the secretary is the face of the company, the person clients see first. They couldn't hire just anyone to appease Sarah's concerns. So they lived together, going to work and coming home together. But at work, Sarah couldn't find her place, especially every time she saw Brittany. Today, Sarah felt a slight discomfort. She couldn't understand what it could be related to. She decided to see a doctor immediately, as she always did when something bothered her. Little did she know that this visit to the doctor would turn out to be so happy for her. It was there that she was informed she was pregnant. She would never forget that day, how she joyfully ran home, eager to share the news with Archie. She cooked a delicious meal and waited for her husband. Sarah was sure Archie would be delighted to hear they were expecting a child. But things didn't quite go as expected. When she told Archie he would soon be a father, he paled. Sarah, you know it's not the right time to have children. We're fully immersed in our careers. Archie, if not now, then when? Don't forget, I'm over 30. Each year, it becomes more difficult to have a healthy baby. Do what you want. If you're really ready for children, then we'll have them. Sarah had expected a different reaction. Now, looking at Archie's sadness, she was completely at a loss about what to do. For several weeks, Archie was gloomy. He couldn't get used to the idea of becoming a father soon. However, as Sarah's belly started to show, Archie began to show his love. Maybe he didn't excel at it, but he tried. During an ultrasound, Sarah learned they were having a daughter. She was ecstatic because she had always dreamed of having a daughter. Every day before bed, she caressed her belly and imagined strolling with a pram. There was only one thing that troubled her. Once she went on maternity leave, Archie started staying late at work often. When Sarah asked about it, Archie responded with aggression, saying she was meddling in his affairs. Sometimes she didn't care where Archie was. Right now, she cared about her daughter's birth and future life. Sometimes she even thought if things continued to go so poorly, she might divorce Archie and live alone. But fate had other plans. One day, Sarah was called to work and asked to come quickly. She didn't understand what had happened there. She had been on maternity leave for several weeks. John was so convincing that Sarah had no choice but to gather herself and head to the office. But when she arrived, she was very surprised. All the employees were crowded in the street, and there were several police cars near the office. What's going on here? She asked Anthony, who looked very anxious. Here I am, not hiding. So why am I being summoned? Sarah responded, displeased by her boss's tone. Let's go to my office so we can discuss this privately, Anthony replied, his voice still stern. Sarah was practically escorted to Anthony's office. Once inside, a police officer leveled an accusation against her. You've been transferring large sums of money from the company's accounts. What are you talking about? I've never taken anything that wasn't mine. This must be a mistake. Please investigate, Sarah said, still not comprehending what was happening. Sarah, I've known you for a long time, and I'm sure you wouldn't do this on your own. But tell us, who forced you to make these transfers? John asked, looking at her. Anthony, what are you saying? Call my husband here. He will confirm everything. Actually, your husband has stated that this was done by your hand, Anthony replied. What? Sarah exclaimed, bewildered. That's right. 
Initial suspicions pointed to him. That's when he confessed how you planned your future life, how you transferred money to dummy accounts. This can't be true. Are you trying to pin everything on me because you found a weak link? Sarah's anger flared. Sarah, please calm down. Consider who might benefit from framing you. No one would. I have no enemies. I get along well with my colleagues. I don't understand any of this. You'll have to come with us to the station. We'll continue the discussion there, the officer insisted. I'm not going anywhere, Sarah declared defiantly. This is not up for discussion. Let's go. The policeman tried to lift Sarah, but she resisted with her elbows. If only Sarah had known that arriving at work would lead to such humiliation, being escorted out of the office by the police, with all the people she had worked with for many years watching. In the crowd of other employees, she saw her husband. He wasn't alone. He was with Brittany. Archie, what's happening? She shouted to her husband. He just looked at her, then turned away and disappeared into the crowd with Brittany. Tears streamed down Sarah's cheeks. She didn't understand what would happen next, and her stomach began to ache. They never made it to the precinct. Sarah started experiencing excruciating pain on the way, and soon an ambulance took her away. Doctors fought for Sarah's and the baby's lives. Throughout it all, Sarah was unconscious, and the baby's life hung in the balance. She opened her eyes and looked around. White walls surrounded her. Occasionally, doctors hurried through the corridor. The woman immediately felt her empty stomach. Now she was afraid of only one thing, that the child was not saved. A doctor passing by saw that Sarah had regained consciousness and literally seconds later was already beside her. Doctor, where is my daughter? Sarah, please don't worry, but unfortunately, we did everything we could. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Calm down, you'll have more children. Everything will be fine. Sarah cried and screamed, and at her cry, a nurse came running and injected her with a sedative. Already falling asleep, the woman saw a policeman enter the ward, say something to the doctor, and leave again. The next day, Sarah realized that her room was guarded by policemen, probably to prevent her from escaping. But where would she escape to? The woman spent two weeks in bed, and then, as soon as she felt better, she was taken to the police station. Sarah was charged with fraud, involving substantial sums of money, and she couldn't understand who could help her now. But this can't be. It can't happen that you live happily, and then everything ends in an instant, she said to the investigator. As a woman, I understand you perfectly, but you must also understand there is the law, replied the investigator. I just don't understand who benefited from this, who could have betrayed me, if not my own husband. If I were you, I'd really think about it. Have you noticed anything suspicious in his behavior lately? No, everything was normal. We were getting ready to become parents. Each memory was painfully etched in Sarah's heart. She understood that she had lost her daughter and now had no reason to live at all. It was strange that her husband hadn't even come to see her in the police station, hadn't tried to explain anything. It made her think that maybe Archie was involved after all. Sarah spent several months in isolation and then there was the trial. Many people were present at the trial. There was John, and there was her husband, who was gently holding Brittany's hand. Sarah looked at this happy couple and cried. It was so painful that some Brittany had taken her place. Archie himself tried not to look his wife in the eye. He constantly looked away, and every time he saw Sarah staring at him intently, he pretended not to notice. How I hate you! Those were Sarah's first words when asked for her final statement. I know you're involved in this. I just don't understand why. 
I'm not involved in anything. I'm completely innocent. They checked me too, Archie replied. Never mind. What goes around comes around. We'll meet again for sure. Are you trying to scare me? No, it's just a warning. Silence in the courtroom, said the judge. The court is adjourned for sentencing. People stood up, and the judge left. Sarah, holding her head in her hands, began to think about what would happen to her next. She had never imagined she would end up in prison. All the testimonies and evidence pointed towards Sarah being the one who did it. She didn't speak at the trial about how her husband often brought papers for her to sign and how these last documents, with her signature prominently displayed, were brought by Archie. She decided she would serve her time, but once free, she would make her husband's life miserable. Soon, the judge returned and delivered the verdict. Sarah was sentenced to five years in a minimum security prison. It was like a thunderbolt from a clear sky. Sarah cried and again stared at her husband, who was also somewhat surprised. He had hoped for a suspended sentence. Sarah was handcuffed and led out of the courtroom. It all felt like a dream. A long journey, and Sarah found herself in the prison. Surprised faces greeted her in the cell. Sarah feared she wouldn't be accepted here. But everything turned out quite differently. The women here were just like her. Each had a charge related to fraud. Some earned money deceitfully. Others, like Sarah, had spent money through work. The stories were diverse. Sarah immediately shared what had happened to her with her new friends, encountering understanding. You should have insisted they investigate Archie, one of them said. I feel like it's his doing. His and that mistress of his. If only I had known she was really his mistress, I probably would have made sure she was fired long ago. But they played the boss and secretary roles so well. You'd be a real fool if you get out of here and don't get revenge on them. We'll see. I still have five years to spend here, Sarah sighed heavily. Indeed, time dragged on endlessly in this remote place. Sarah counted the days and eagerly awaited the appointed year to draw near. She found a friend in Rebecca, who she was constantly with. Rebecca, like Sarah, was due to be released in three years. However, Rebecca was released a few months early for good behavior. Today, she was leaving these places. Sarah cried as if she were losing something precious in her life. Rebecca, I really hope we meet out there. I don't have much longer either. Well, of course we'll meet. What are you even asking? I'll get on my feet right now and come pick you up. On my feet? Yes, luckily I have the money for it, Rebecca smiled. Where did you get the money? You said you're not guilty. I'm not guilty of anything. I just took what's mine, Rebecca winked. Oh, Rebecca, and I believed you, Sarah smiled back. The friend said their goodbyes, and Rebecca left. Sarah believed it would be Rebecca who would come to meet her on the day of her release. And so it happened. Five years had been very long, but they had passed. Sarah walked out of the gates and breathed in the fresh air. She couldn't believe it was all over. Now, all she felt was hatred and a desire for revenge. Revenge on her husband and his mistress. It was because of them that she never got to experience motherhood. They were the ones who had orchestrated everything to put her here. Near the gate stood a tall and expensive car, with Rebecca behind the wheel. Well, friend, shall we go? The woman asked, rolling down the window. Rebecca, I can't believe you actually came for me. Of course, I promised. Rebecca turned off the engine and got out of the car. They hugged each other and stood like that for several minutes. So, where should we go? I don't even know. Honestly, I don't have anywhere special to go. 
Don't say that. Let's go to my place. My home is always open to you. Thank you, Rebecca. I just need somewhere to stay for a while while I figure everything out. And so the woman drove to the capital. Sarah had missed this city terribly. She looked around carefully, realizing how much had changed here in five years. New houses were popping up everywhere. Beautiful Moscow was flourishing. Rebecca, why don't you tell me where you got all this from? Yeah, no need for a long story. I hid for a bit, but I served my time for them, laughed her friend. Better tell me, what are you planning to do now? I don't know. Probably first thing, find my husband. Look him in the eye and finally understand why he did it. And then get revenge. I want him to suffer just like I did. Right. Letting it slide is out of the question. They arrived at a cozy mansion on the outskirts. This was Rebecca's place. Besides Rebecca, her mother and daughter lived in this house. The daughter was already grown up. All this time Rebecca was there, her grandmother raised her. Well, make yourself at home. Feel free to ask for anything you need. And relax for now. We'll go shopping later. You need to update your wardrobe. Oh, Rebecca, you do so much for me already. How will I ever repay you? Don't even think about it. Trust me, I'm not offended. I hid away enough money. And I don't consider what I did a crime. After all the years I worked for that fool, he owes me three times more. Sarah chuckled. She enjoyed it when Rebecca shared stories from her past life. In her previous life, Rebecca was happily married. Her husband was a successful businessman. He only found out three years later that Rebecca was secretly taking money. And she didn't do it just because. She was tired of his constant infidelities and absurd excuses. She decided to prepare the ground for divorce, but didn't get the chance. Now she regrets nothing. What's done is done, as they say. That evening, the ladies went shopping. They completely updated Sarah's wardrobe, and by nightfall, they went to a restaurant to celebrate. It was very fun and somehow unusual. For Sarah, everything that was happening now felt like a real fairy tale. A fairy tale after five years of hardship. The next morning, Sarah went early to her old address. She really wanted to see Archie. However, unfamiliar people answered the door. They said they had been living there for four years and unfortunately didn't know where the previous owners had gone. At that moment, Sarah realized that only her former mother-in-law could help her in this tangled situation, although she wasn't eager to meet her. The ex-mother-in-law always treated her strangely, and now, after Sarah served her time, she might not even let her in. But something had to be done, so straight from her old apartment, Sarah went to see her former mother-in-law. The ex-mother-in-law greeted her with a displeased face. She remained silent for a while, scrutinizing Sarah carefully. You haven't changed much, I see. Neither have you. But that's not why I'm here. I'm very interested to know where Archie lives now. I need to talk to him urgently. Why do you need Archie? He's doing well. Young wife, they have a child. Well, I don't have a child, thanks to his young wife and Archie himself. You know, I would never have given you my son's address if everything was fine with him. That young thing is just bleeding him dry. I don't care how your son lives, but I need his address. And I'm not leaving here until you give it to me. The mother-in-law sighed and soon handed her a piece of paper with Archie's current address written on it. Sarah headed there. A taxi brought her to a large mansion, which surprised her. Where did Archie get so much money? Though she could guess. 
Getting out of the car and approaching the fence, she saw a little girl playing in the yard. Sarah felt a pang of sadness. She could have had a child too, possibly of the same age. If her daughter had survived, maybe she would never have sought revenge. She stared at the child for a long moment, then saw Brittany, the secretary, coming out of the house. She looked a bit different now, tired eyes, disheveled hair, all of which pleased Sarah undoubtedly. After watching this family happiness a little longer, she rang the doorbell, and soon Archie appeared. Honestly, his jaw almost dropped when he saw Sarah. Sarah, are you released already? Released, yes. So, Archie, what do you have to say to me? Why did you do this to me? What did I do? I didn't do anything. He nervously replied. Stop lying to me. I know you set me up with your Brittany. Sarah, stop talking nonsense. We're not involved in this. Strange. Then how do you have money for such an expensive house? Sarah glanced again at the wealth before her. That's none of your business. Get off my property and don't let me see you here again. You know I won't leave it at this. I will get revenge and you will beg for forgiveness. Get out, Archie said again. Sarah walked away. Later that evening, she told Rebecca about how well Archie was living, about his wonderful daughter and young wife. She was angry. She wanted revenge. She wanted Archie to suffer too. I have an idea. Look, you lost your daughter because of them. So, we need to make them lose theirs. What are you suggesting? I won't commit a crime, especially against a child, Sarah protested. No, silly. I'm suggesting we just kidnap her to shake them up and show them they can't mess with you. I don't know. I don't think I could do that. It's easy. It's just a child. We'll watch them, see where they go, what they do. Okay, I'll think about your suggestion. Sarah didn't think for long. She realized it was the only way to punish Archie, to prove he was wrong. And she was deeply hurt. She began to frequently visit Archie's home, observing where their little daughter went. But what she saw there surprised her. Brittany treated the child as if she didn't love her at all. She constantly shouted at her, called her ugly names. Sarah even felt sorry for the child. Every day they went to daycare, then attended a dance class, and also went to gymnastics. In principle, the little girl's day was scheduled hour by hour. Sarah understood perfectly well that if she kidnapped a child again, she would end up back behind bars. But right now, she didn't care at all. Rebecca was helping her with this as well. And then one evening, Rebecca came home with a satisfied look on her face. She sat down on the couch and told Sarah that Brittany was looking for a nanny for their child. Rebecca, where did you get this information? I'm amazed. What are you up to? You seem to know everything. Well, you know, I still have some connections. But I can't go work for their child. They know me very well. You can't, but I can. Rebecca, this is dangerous. Do you realize we could end up behind bars? I do. But I want your Archie to suffer. He's caused you too much already. So the next day, Rebecca went for an interview. Acquaintances helped her create a good resume and recommendation letters. Strangely enough, Rebecca was immediately hired. Now she spent every day with a girl named Alice. Rebecca noted that the girl was really very nice, kind, and empathetic, nothing like Brittany. You know, I'd sooner believe she's your child than that awful Brittany. But you know, my child couldn't be saved, Sarah said quietly, looking down. Okay, we still need to keep an eye on this family. Maybe they have other weaknesses, 
and then we won't have to use Alice. Yes, I really hope you find something else. While Rebecca pretended to be a nanny, Sarah wasn't sitting idle either. She went to Anthony's office and tried to talk to him. Initially, John didn't even want to see her, but after Sarah mentioned her ex-husband's large mansion, Anthony finally led her into his office to talk. I honestly didn't know where Archie had disappeared to. I heard he was really upset about you ending up in jail. And now he's married and bought himself a house. I wonder where he got the money. Anthony, don't you understand yet that I was in prison for a crime I didn't commit? I was framed. And those two framed me. Well, I did consider that. But you were involved too. If it's as you say, though, you signed the money transfer papers in any case. You were my accountant. I'm not denying my guilt. I already served my time. All right, you've convinced me. I'll try to retrieve the old documents. I'll try to dig something up. And it's only out of respect for you. Thank you, Anthony. Sarah knew that an investigation would now begin. Most likely, this time they would find evidence pointing to her innocence. The woman sat at home drinking hot tea. She was eagerly waiting for Rebecca to arrive so she could tell her about the agreement with Anthony. Today, Rebecca was strangely delayed. Hours passed. Sarah couldn't sit still. She kept calling Rebecca nonstop, afraid that something had happened to her. But suddenly, the front door opened and Rebecca appeared in the doorway, holding two bottles of sparkling wine. Well, darling, sit down. Let's celebrate our victory. What victory? Where have you been? I called you a thousand times. Oh, right, I forgot my phone in the car. I'm about to tell you something that will blow your mind. Well, come on, tell me. So, I was looking for something related to Archie and I found some very interesting documents. And what are these documents? Now I'll show you. I took them with me. Rebecca, are you out of your mind? What if they start looking for them? They won't. I'll return them to their place tomorrow. The documents indicated that five years ago, Brittany and Archie adopted this girl and the girl's date of birth was exactly when Sarah was in the hospital. Sarah, do you even understand that this could be your child? Rebecca asked her. Rebecca, it just can't be. They told me they didn't save my daughter. She was only seven months old at the time. Well, I don't know. Looking at Alice, I'm starting to see more and more of you in her. Sarah thought. Perhaps it would be a great happiness if everything her friend said turned out to be true. So, tomorrow we're going to the hospital where you were sent. No one will tell us anything, Sarah said immediately. Trust me, if we have money in our hands, even the mute will speak. Rebecca, I adore you. Everything comes so easily to you, and you solve everything without a guilty conscience. And if it weren't for you, I'd probably just be in depression as soon as I got out. Everything will be fine, you'll see. The next day, the women went to the hospital. Of course, no one wanted to talk to them at first. And only the midwife, who was on duty that day for a small symbolic fee, finally opened her eyes to that strange story. You were unconscious when your husband came. He asked the chief doctor to say that the girl did not survive. And then, as soon as we brought her out, he arranged for the child to be adopted by himself and Brittany. I don't even know how much money he gave to our doctor at the time. Where is this doctor now? Rebecca asked. Who knows where he is now? He quit right away and seemed to have gone to live somewhere by the sea. Sarah stood there with a surprised expression. Her eyes sparkled with happiness. 
She had just learned that her daughter was alive. She had even seen her. Sarah couldn't bear another minute of waiting. She told Rebecca they needed to go to Archie's immediately and get the child back. Sarah, where are we going to go? We have no evidence that all this is true. No one will believe us just based on the midwife's words. Here's what I suggest. Tomorrow, I'll take a hair sample from Alice and we'll do a DNA test that will prove she's your daughter. Rebecca, you're a true friend. I don't know what I would do without you. Sarah hugged Rebecca and started crying. Emotions overwhelmed her. She understood that her life was about to change. Everything will be okay, my friend. You'll see. The next day, Rebecca indeed took a few strands of Alice's hair, and she and Sarah took the samples to the laboratory. Now they just had to wait. However, the next day, John called Sarah. He confessed that there were indeed inconsistencies in the statements. There were documents indicating that Archie was involved in embezzling a large sum of money. That's strange. Why couldn't you find these documents earlier? Sarah asked Anthony as soon as she arrived at his place. Sarah, you know when they already have someone to blame, no one bothers to investigate further. Now I know. Sarah, forgive me for not believing you. I really should have checked Archie right away. Lately, he hasn't been himself. But he was my friend, and I trusted him. Oh, come on, Anthony, what's done is done. I just found out that my daughter is alive and being raised by Archie. It can't be. I'm in shock myself. Right now, we're waiting for the DNA test, and then we'll take it to court. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. I'll help you. And I also wanted to ask, are you going to appeal the verdict? Are you going to send Archie to prison? I don't know. If he agrees to voluntarily give me my daughter back, then I'll probably leave it as it is. I've forgiven everyone a long time ago. You're a golden woman, John smiled and hugged Sarah briefly. And then everything unfolded like in a real movie. The DNA test confirmed that Alice was indeed Sarah's daughter. That same evening, armed with these documents, Sarah went to Archie. She argued vehemently, waved the documents, and threatened that if Archie didn't agree to voluntarily return their daughter, he would end up behind bars. Archie didn't believe it at first. He found it amusing. But after John arrived and confirmed Sarah's words, Archie began to reconsider. But if you want to raise Alice so badly, take her. Brittany can't get along with her anyway. Your Brittany can't get along with anyone. I still can't believe you fell for her charms, remarked Sarah's friend. Sarah sued her ex-husband, and soon enough, Alice was returned to her mother. It was the happiest day of her life. She hugged Alice for several minutes, breathing in the scent of her hair. For the little girl, everything that was happening might have felt like a dream. She didn't quite understand why she was taken away from her father and given to this woman. But soon, life began to unfold in new colors. Sarah looked at her daughter and couldn't believe her happiness. Finally, she understood that the most important thing in life is children, and one should do everything for them. Rebecca helped buy them a home, saying that money came easily to her and she would spend it just as easily. Soon after, John started courting Sarah. He confessed he had feelings for her for a long time. But to avoid ruining his reputation and falling out with his friend, he had kept silent and endured. Whether Sarah will reciprocate his feelings remains unclear. She's too immersed in raising her daughter. Meanwhile, Archie now only pays child support and often catches his wife with a younger lover. But Sarah's life is now good, all her loved ones are close, and this happiness is something she wouldn't trade for anything else. 
She has the opportunity to see her daughter grow up, start first grade, and experience her first love. She hopes it will always be like this. She even forgave Archie and decided to let him live his life as he sees fit, as long as he stays out of hers.